What is up everyone, I'm Scratch, welcome to the channel, this is another Dragon and Silent Gods video, hope you guys are having an amazing day. In today's video guys, I want to talk about a couple of legendary artifacts that you guys should not miss on. You should do everything in your powers to make sure you guys are getting these two legendary artifacts, because once Season 2 is over, you will not be able to get them again, at least we have no information if they're ever going to come back to the game, and I really think that they are absolutely amazing uh, as uh, legendary artifacts and you have the possibility to put your hand on them for free by grinding the the game you know before we move over to talk about the rest of the details guys uh, i just want to say a big thank you to dragoner for sponsoring today's video if you guys are new to the channel if you haven't tried dragoner silent gods just yet uh, considering downloading the game by using the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the qr code you see on the screen you will get to help and support the channel as well, guys, by using my link when you are actually downloading uh, Dragonair Silent Gods, which I greatly, greatly appreciated. Talking about the very main uh, thing, guys, Fey Mander, okay? Right here, we have an absolutely amazing legendary artifact once you complete the 180 stages. Now, this is very challenging content. It's not impossible, it's just challenging. So, it really depends if you have the will to spend time and retry the same stage over and over again till you manage to beat it. It's very important to use a lot of stun sets. It's very important to rely on tankiness rather than bringing in a lot of squishy damage dealers. So I'm going to walk you a bit through some of the strategies that you could potentially use to defeat this, uh, this content. And the artifact that you're getting from here, the Revatrix, Roots, guys, is just game-changing for everyone, including for uh, accounts like mine, including for everybody, because you're getting attack and HP on the character. Now, if you're using it on non-legendary characters, rares or epics, you're getting double the stats. You're getting 30% HP and 30% attack. This will boost your damage like crazy. Such a game-changer against uh, wall bosses. Such a game-changer pretty much everywhere where you are using this artifact. And on top of it, it will increase your uh, survivability substantially. So it's definitely an artifact that you don't want to miss out on. Talking about the Fey Mander, guys. So I'm usually behind with all of these stages. You see, I still have uh, 27 more stages to, to beat. Last season as well, I literally waited till the last week to, to do it. What I would suggest you, max your, uh, your Psyche Core, at least for the team that you're trying to push in here. Uh, try to get the best possible gear that you can, uh, max your heroes, and then stress about the Fame Mander. It's going to be easier for you to fight these stages. So I'm using Rally. I used Rally last season as well. The reason why I prefer to use Rally, guys, is because they have an insane firepower that can two-shot most of these waves. And that is very, very beneficial. Now, this time around, I'm using... Uh, Faesa instead of a different character that had a uh, defense down AoE. And I will have probably to do a couple of uh, adjustments in here in case if I delete my team. Uh, I've created so many different teams before that maybe, just maybe, I lost, uh, I lost one of the teams. But this is what I have in terms of equipment. Yes, I do have pretty, pretty good legendary artifacts. And I could use instead of the Solar King's Horn, honestly, something that will provide me more, uh, more healing like the Bells. Or I could use the legendary artifact from the Pillar of Trials, which we're going to get to in just a second. But I'm going to stick with this team. Now, instead of Faesa, I would prefer somebody else that could uh, put the defense down easily on the enemy. A Voresh is actually great on a stun set. Voresh will actually land some uh, stuns, hopefully, in, uh, in here. You can use food, so make sure you are using food, guys, because this is going to be very, very effective. It's going to help you quite a bit. Make sure you're using the right aura. If you're going for survivability, if you're going for damage, make sure you're bringing the right aura in. How I mentioned, I prefer to go in with a team like this because this will bring in a lot of damage. I'm going to be able to kill these waves extremely, extremely fast. I'm actually going to put it on, a, on 10 x speed. You see we have a cheeky stun in there. We stun like four enemies. So the way the stun works in here, guys, is basically going to proc for every time you're damaging an enemy. That's why having multiple stun sets is going to be extremely, extremely important. I already have a guide for last season on how exactly I 
tackled some of the stages. And I would strongly suggest you to watch that if you are struggling with this content. But you see, a Radiance team will allow you to do these sort of things. Now, I, I know, I know a lot of people won't have access to a team like this. A lot of people won't have uh, Huberg. A lot of people won't have Laurentil. So it won't be as easy as you've just seen it on the screen. So I would suggest you to try different sort of strategies. Let's just say you have Garius. Let's just say you have uh, um, uh, you have Voresh. You have Ardred maybe because you went for the event. So you have a lot of healing involved in this in this triangle, right? Now you need to have some damage, and there are thankfully quite a few quite a few radiance, quite a few uh, frost heroes that deal good damage. For an example, you have. Rowena, she deals amazing AoE damage. Now, my only problem here is that I don't really have um, a champion like Rava to put in for uh, for the fight. So I'm just kind of like giving you guys uh, an example. And another thing that I would really like to bring in this team is decrease attack. So let's ignore the fact that I need a Frost. I would bring in Gardras. Why? Because Gardras will bring me attack penalty on a single enemy, but it will give me this skill right here. Stun knock up recharge speed penalty having crowd control against the enemy is the ultimate key in defeating the fey mander on waves now when we're talking about bosses is a different story you want to have a lot of support you want to have clans you want to have resistance on, in some cases uh is really different for the bosses but i feel like the harder part in the fey mander are the waves rather than the bosses honestly so this could potentially be an option. Let's just say you want to go with a completely different uh, elemental affinity. Now, I I think if you don't have the super OP champions from the Necrosis and Fire, it's going to be painful. Like, if I go in like this, right, and I, I bring in a, a couple of damage dealers, I'm going to be spot on. Like, this right here is a, is a strong is a strong option, you know? And then I just need to bring in either more healing, just in case, Either more uh, more damage, you know, and you have quite a few quite a few options for damage that could potentially could potentially work pretty pretty good. But if you don't have all of these ones, I think it's going to be fairly hard to just go in here and try to defeat the Feymander. Now you can go with a combination of fire heroes, and I think a Dane does a good job. Uh, not the best tank, Horus. Uh, is all they can work too, and Adolphus. And the next thing is basically having the, the damage, you know. And I think burn can work pretty well if you can uh, survive for like 20 seconds till you're using the ultimate. Uh, Arasis, Asketius, with enough burns, will just one-shot everybody. Because most of them, they will group together, and you're going to have burns on a lot, of, uh, a lot of enemies. And that will allow you to drop in a lot of damage. In fact, let's actually quickly give it a go with my fire team and see if we are able to defeat a stage like this. So let's just go in with this. It's not necessarily the ultimate best example, but you know what? I am very curious to see if we are able to, to put in some work on, a, on the enemies like this. You know, Are we able to, to actually survive, uh, to deal some damage? So I want, I want to have survivability. The damage should kill the enemies, right? So... Let's actually give it a give it a go like this. I feel like that quest I will just rip my uh my uh my bigs. She will just rip him apart. I'm quickly gonna shield before uh, before she even jumps on him. <laughs> Look at that. No, don't 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 kill him yet. Don't kill him yet. Let him put some burns, please. Okay. The thing is, it's very hard to survive with some of these. Uh... And Arasis, Arasis, unlike Ascatius, actually. That's that's the thing with Ascatius. You see, that's the difference. It's still the damage went fairly decent from them, but the thing with Ascatius, he covers the entire area. That's the thing that Arasis doesn't do. So unfortunately, Arasis is not very effective against this because he's only going to deal damage on uh, I forgot. He's only going to deal damage uh, on enemies that are near him. And I completely forgot about uh, this part. So burn is not really not really the best option. You can go with a champion like Duram. Duram is not bad, you know, if you have scrolls on him and stuff. Uh, you can go in with AoE, burn heroes, not arrests necessarily. We do have a uh, few options, right? We have a few options that uh, could potentially work. Lyle, uh, AoE damage. But I feel like it's going to be very slow. They're not going to be as effective. So that kind of like brings me back to, 
to my next thing. This is going to be pretty painful to, to keep alive. Wild heroes are not the greatest. Uh, champions like Huldork are much better in this, in this scenario. Uh, Jorn, much, much better, you know, and then brings me back to my necrotic champions where we're bringing in a Zarlot, and we need to find some other AoE damage that can potentially work, but we need to have good, uh, good support. I think Fire and Necrosis is going to be the hardest if you don't have the OP champions. But let's just say we are relying on uh, champions from Lightning and Poison. This, again, is, is actually going to be fairly decent. It's going to be more effective. Uh, Irina, great on a stun set. Uh, Yola, great on a double skill haste set. And you want to have, preferably, either the Witch's Remains on her, either the Rift Hourglass. So these are already two solid uh, options. If you have a Tamar, even better. She's going to be amazing. Nathaniel, very good support. Zephy is going to be amazing at keeping your team alive. You're going to have to manual a lot of these stages. That's why I said you need to, you need to have the time and you need to, have the, you need to be determined to do it. Shook uh, can be okay because of this skill attack penalty and recharge speed penalty. Uh, recharge speed penalty is very, very effective. You don't want to use single target uh, uh, melee heroes, guys, because they won't be as effective. They will die. And unfortunately, they're just not going to, to cut it off. But if we're going to go to Poison, here as well, you have a couple of uh, solid options. Vikak is a good support as, a, as an idea. Cleanse, you're getting a, a bit of healing. He's not the best support, though. He's not the best support. And because of it, I find uh, using Frerbart and Hexandra more efficient. So this could potentially be one team. This could potentially be one team with, uh, with Sigrid. But this requires a lot of tries. This requires you to time every single skill. This requires you to use a lot of stun sets, even on Hexandra potentially, okay? And yes, Eli is great too because of this skill. Uh, he can be effective too. Uh, Irina is better because she brings decreased attack. She brings a bit of support with a passive and she's a rare. So I would strongly suggest to use her instead. Uh, if we are talking about Theodore, decent option with a stun, but I'd rather use stun sets instead and try to, to get it done like that. But honestly, the key is, is that. And you are getting this champion. You're getting Geldin from the Feymander. I think stage 60, if I'm not mistaken, right? You're getting a stun and knockback. And you're getting a, another stun and knockback. Accuracy penalty with a, with a passive. He's not bad. He can potentially play, play a pretty good role in your team. You know, like maybe instead of one of the damage dealers. It's going, it's going to be slower. And you need to keep in mind the following thing. The slower you are defeating the enemy, the higher the chance for the enemy to defeat your team. So that is very, very important. But this will work on every single stage. Some of the stages will require you to go with a lot of tankiness in order to survive and slowly drag the HP on the enemy and kill, kill them. Some of the stages will require you to bring in Force Brute and some sort of a trick to survive quick but take them down as fast as possible so they're not creating you any complications. That is the trick in here. You have a lot of double, uh, double enemies that are very, very annoying. And I really don't want you guys to miss on this legendary artifact because it's amazing. Now, if you guys would like to see what teams I'm using to defeat this content, if you guys will get stuck on any of the stages for the next one week, please let me know in the comments down below and I will consider to make videos, guides on those dedicated stages for you guys. If you are really, really interested, if I see that a lot of you guys are interested in them, I will do it. And if you want to see my teams, the way I'm running it, I'll do it too. Once I'll run a stage, it's going, uh, it's going to be no uh, chance for me to go back and do it again. You know how it is with this content. So let me know in the comments down below. This was more of a general guide on how you should approach this sort of content. Then you have the Pillar of Trials. And I'll be honest, I do think this is more challenging than the Fey Mander if you don't have the right characters from the right elemental affinities. Some of these stages are extremely, extremely difficult and you need to rely again on crowd control a lot. And I'll be honest, it is pretty much the same advice I gave you in the Fey Mander. All of these stages will work pretty much the same. You need to crowd control the enemies, but this time around you have three different waves of enemies. We're going to do a run in a second. This legendary artifact is amazing for healers that require enlightenment. It's amazing for healers like uh, Hexandra, 
for the battle skill and her ultimate skill is amazing on Gillian, is amazing on many characters like this. Healing from the wearer increases by 25%. Meanwhile, the wearer receives an additional uh, 125 resistance as, uh, at max level and you're getting a lot of enlightenment. So this will be a massive boost for, uh, for the healer. Definitely another artifact that you don't want to miss on. Let's actually just do a quick run on here to see what I'm dealing with as well. It's a pretty challenging stage. I haven't really allocated the time to, to get this done. This team that I have right here on the screen is much better. The only thing is they're not built at the moment because I constantly move the move gear around and I do not think that I saved the I saved the preset for it. Unfortunately, I wish I would have done it. That would have been very very uh, helpful, but I don't think I I created one. So that's that's going to be a bit of a problem. I'm going to have to uh, rebuild them again once I'm going to I'm going to try them out. But let's bring out the team that I'm normally normally using on here and uh, that should be the one right here. Now, the reason why it's so challenging, guys, is because even though I am crowd controlling them, they are doing a lot of damage. Now, in here, unlike in the Fae Mander, guys, you cannot, you cannot use any food. So positioning will be pretty important because if not, you will get the mushroom from Tolward. So we're going to run something like this. And you need to be very specific with the skills. You need to uh, be on point with when you are using the, the skills. So that's why I have them uh, like this. So I actually... Uh, manual the skills myself on a, on the enemies like that one right there we want to make sure she's she's staying uh stunned for a for a little longer we want to make sure now we're putting the shield uh, but we got taunted unfortunately i'm not even sure who taunted us but basically this is what happens so you need to be spot on with the healing you need to be spot on with the decrease attack you need to be spot on with the stun you need to be spot on with whatever else keeps your team alive and right there we actually got taunted and that created issues with uh, with him. Let's actually bring the tank in here. And this will already change the outcome of the fight. Why? Because nobody's going to go to Nathaniel. The mushroom should not go so uh, far away from uh, from Tolward, you know. It should not... There we go. Shield quick because that... Uh, that uh, Yola was using her skill. And then put the damage on, you know. Whatever you have coming. Sigrid is great here as well because of the decreased attack. And again, I'm going to have to manual and use this shield that I have in here. If no, I could potentially get one shot by some of them. If two hits from two of these enemies reach you at the same time, it's actually very, very dangerous. Luckily, Nathaniel just proc that shield right before the opponent was about to use the ultimate skill, you know. So right now, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to CC them and move over to the next, uh, to the next wave slowly. It's very important to pay attention to detail, you know. If you're not doing it, you're not going to defeat the stages, you know. It's, it's not uh, impossible to beat them without using legendary champions, but you need to be spot on. And I have actually friends that uh, used much uh, lighter teams than me. They used Sigrid, they went in without Zephy, they went in without Perkunte, of course. But I'm just showing you right now what I'm, uh, what I'm dealing with basically here. So I'm going to try to land the stun in here. I'm going to keep the one from uh, Tamar for a little longer. Seems like that did not land it. So we're going to attempt to do it again right now. We have the damage going. And you really need to be spot on in here as well. Because somebody will deal so much damage. They will deal so much damage. I'm not even sure who deals all the damage. But look at the HP dropping. And I had a lot of shield in there. So right now again. We got to go in and put the, the crowd control as fast as possible. And you need to target on which enemies you want to have that. Because if you're constantly getting healing from a uh, Vikak on the enemy, that's not good either, you know, because uh, he will create you even more issues from, uh, from here on. Nathaniel pulling the heal again, slowly trying to, to get him down. Okay, we got resisted right there with Flurbart, which was unfor uh, unfortunate with a decreased attack. And you need to stop some of the skills to don't, to don't activate on, on that wave, because you need to come to the next one, and you want to come prepared. The faster you are able to stun the opponents, the better. Because this will literally give you the edge of using your ultimate skill twice before they get to use their own. So that is very, very important. Right now, I should have Tamar to come in with another stun. Let's just say you're using stun sets. You might have to retry this stage 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times till you do it. For me as well, probably this is my 15th. Uh, my 15th try or maybe 
maybe less than that, but I'm I'm at around at least minimum 10 tries on, a, on this stage. And it seems like all I needed to do in order to defeat this is do it live for you guys while I'm doing a guide on how to get the legendary artifacts and why we should work on getting them. Now then, of course, the boss will be a different uh, type of story. You're not only going to have to deal with the boss, but you're going to have to deal with the waves. And that's the next, uh, the next thing in there. I actually don't even have Zephy in this team. I don't know why I thought that I, I had Zephy in the previous team, but I haven't used Zephy this time around. So we managed to defeat that stage, guys. It literally took me probably like 10, uh, 10 plus tries before. And when you are doing the boss, you might have to change something. Either change a champion in, either change the way you're positioning your champions. You might want to group them. You might want to separate them even more than you had it before. Uh, there are all sorts of things that you're going to have to test out and see what works and what doesn't, you know? And this is something that you will have to do based on whatever team you have available on a, on your account. You know, like, she's a she's a solid option in here. A cleanser could be very good in here, like Vikak, you know? Like, you have quite a few quite a few different uh, different options and you will have to deal with the waves and with the boss too so that's why it's a bit more challenging in the in the pillar of trials but if you guys want to see any particular guides on uh, any content guys like the fame mander on stages or stage 170 to 180 let me know in the comments down below appreciate every single one of you guys watching how i mentioned i really don't think you should be uh skipping these legendary artifacts if you have the possibility to get them 100 percent don't do it try and get them work your ass off to to put your hand on them thank you to uh dragonair for sponsoring today's video again and if you guys want to get involved and download dragonair silent gods you can do it by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the qr code you see on the screen much love and i'll catch you all in the next video peace